Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. Now, I promised we would draw Astrid from How to Train Your Dragon series, uh, one, two, and three. So let's go ahead. This one is from number two, and you see this look in part three as well. It's just that I think it represents her the most because it has like her fur and her little skull jacket and then her little shoulder blades, whatever those things are. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do first is draw the basic shape of the head and now Astrid has a really round odd looking head they all are very different but that's what we love about how to train your dragon the entire awesome look to each of their characters so if we go towards the bottom she doesn't really have a defined chin but she definitely has one so I come to a little bit of a point right here next thing I'm gonna do since she's kind of looking up I'm going to take my eye guideline and kind of go way up here and you see I'm bringing it up. The actual guideline is going up as opposed to going like down how I usually draw it. And then I'm going to place where her nose line should fall, like where her nose should go. What I like to do now is lay where her eyes are going to go. So they're a little bit further apart than most characters, so we're going to go pretty close to the edge. So we're gonna go up over here, make one eye here, going up, all right, and then I'm gonna go, go ahead and curve down, still, and you see how I curve at this corner upwards? Go up and then curve. Then I'm gonna jump over here, do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go up, still a little bit distant, go up. Bring this down and then curve. So I'm still keeping in mind that each of my, since it's almost like a three quarter turn, the reference I'm looking at, at the same time it's almost like we're looking straight on, so that means that we have to keep in check how our eyes are looking and keeping them equal as possible. So I'm gonna curve it this way, bring in the corner, and I'm gonna go to the bottom and then curve upwards. So we curve at the side bring this upwards same thing goes for here curve this down and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in one pupil iris here it's going upwards she's looking up and I'm gonna bring this one going upwards leave a lot of white space in her eyes all right and then I'm just gonna go ahead jump in Give her a pupil here. And I'm actually just going to shade this in. She has really dark blue eyes. And I'm just going to shade the top. Jump over here too. And give that pupil right here. Same concept. Really dark blue eyes. So you shade the top. There we go. There's her pupils. Now for her eyelashes, so she doesn't really have much eyelashes on the bottom, but we have really thick ones on top. So you're gonna go out and they're very separated. So they go outwards. And then there's a couple off to the side here. And of course make this really thick on this side as well. Then what you're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give her an eyelid right here and then there's an eyelid right here and then we have one eyebrow we're gonna go so we're gonna make like a little bit of an indention right here and then we have an eyebrow like she's looking up and she's like giving the look like really that kind of expression we're gonna bring the eyebrow over here we don't see much of this eyebrow later, we're just drawing it out for right now just because her hair ultimately covers all of her eyebrows. So I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to give that eyebrow over here as well and I'm just going to stop right there because yeah, her eyebrows are definitely going to get covered up. <laughs> Alright, now jumping down below, so I actually want to bring this nose line a little bit more towards the middle because I'm going to go 
way down here and I'm gonna draw a circle. Not too big of a circle and not too round of a circle, just good enough. Their, their noses aren't that detailed and the more that they're detailed, it's more defined by shading. All right, after her nose, I just wanna go ahead and lay out her lips. So I'm gonna go and just make the simple line for right now. So one is curved at the side, the left side of her face. Like she's just smirking. Once again, it's got this expression of really. So we've got one little curled side right here and then the other side's more relaxed. All right, so let's start with defining her nose first. Now, taking a look at the nose, the thing about how to train your dragon is they're really, really round. So we just have at the bottom of our circle, I'm gonna make a nostril here and a nostril here at the very bottom of the circle. All right, so I'm gonna bring this out over here. Now, I'm gonna just lightly erase and I'm going to shade the nose so you can see it a little bit more. But you wanna keep that little ghost line of that circle that we had so I'm gonna shade alongside of this nostril. And I'm gonna shade on this side of the nose. I'm gonna shade right here alongside this nostril and off to the side. And that defines more of her nose like she's looking up, okay? And then, I'm gonna jump down for her upper lip line. It's rounded, so we're gonna go from the corner, curve in, round this out. So that's the top lip line, and then the bottom is almost the exact same width. So I'm gonna jump from the corner, that curved corner, and just make this a little bit more rounded. And if you want to lightly shade that, you can go ahead and shade it. I'm just gonna shade her upper lip and just lightly shade her bottom lip. Alrighty. Next, we don't wanna make her look, cause she is looking up, we are gonna leave most of this space. So we're gonna jump from right here and underneath right here. All right, so I'm gonna bring in her neck here, going inwards. Same over here, bring her neck in and go inwards this way. Next, let's go ahead and start placing her hair. Number one thing, Astrid, her ears have always popped out to the side. It just makes a unique character design and you always wanna make sure that your ears are on the same level of your eye line. Another thing I'd like to go ahead and put on before we start filling in her hair is her headband. So she's got a solid brown headband and it's going to start right above where we started her actual head. And we're gonna just bring this one off to the side like a little bit above her ear. And that's all we see of her headband. All right, so then I'm gonna jump above that headband and I'm gonna start with the first section of her bangs. All right, so I go a little bit, I'm still using my eye guide, my nose guideline. I'm gonna go straight up, and that's where my part is going to start. The part of her bangs, I'm gonna go off to the side, and it's gonna go over her eyes. And I'm just gonna kind of fluff this out just a bit. Then I have another part of her bangs. I'm just gonna break these up into sections. One part of her bangs goes a little bit in front of this eye and over her headband. And then I have another section of bangs that go over this headband and across in front of her corner of her eye over here. So you see we have like three, three definite sections to start off the front of her face. So I'm gonna bring out this part right here of her head. And I'm actually gonna go right behind her ear. So that means I need to bring that headband over. It's a hit and miss with Astrid's headband. You're always just like, where do I put the headband? 
but her bangs overlap her headband. Absolutely, because it's like underneath her bangs. So if you want to go ahead and erase everything that's in front of her bangs. So you see, after I erase, if I go in and I define her bangs a little bit more, everything is in front of her eyes, her headband, it's just that that's an awesome character decision. Off to the side right here, I'm gonna bring down her bangs down this way. And it's gonna go right up alongside of her face. And then from behind her ear, so from behind her ear, I'm gonna bring down this side of her ponytail because she's gonna have her braid ponytail off on her shoulder. And then we have another section of hair that is coming from underneath her headband and going along in front of her ear and it's going alongside of her face. So we still see her ear right here but we have another section of hair that's going in front of her ear. So if I were to go ahead and erase that, define my ear a little bit more, put, picking it out. There we go. Now, she has a braid on top of her hair up here. For right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make like hills, and then we'll go ahead and define the braid a little bit more. So we're just gonna go alongside her bangs, and this is her braid. It's a really intricate braid. It looks like it was like triple, I mean double quadrupled braided and then braided normal. So it's actually gonna go alongside and we're just gonna give the lumps. And I'm actually gonna draw on the other side, go through her neck. And that way I can start connecting her braid off to the side. So I'm just, once again, I'm just gonna keep this lumpy roughly braided so it goes down in front of our neck. All right, let's go ahead and define her braid a little bit more. Now with the top braid, yes, it is extremely complicated. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and kind of like define just by looking, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna be too complicated with braids, I just like to like make sure that you're piling it on top of each other. And you're making it look like a cinnamon twist. If you've ever seen a cinnamon twist, you just give more bits and pieces. It almost looks like with braids, braids look like that cinnamon twist, but I connect eye drops or you know teardrops together that's how I usually make most of my braids so you just want to keep that in mind with Astrid's hair on the side because these are the tiny little braids and then it goes into the big braid all right so I'm not going to do way too complicated of her braids but they're definitely more intricate and now we get to here and we see where she kind of like loops it into a big mass and then we see it again here. Here's another big mass and it goes over. And then we have one right here coming alongside this one. And then we have one that's back behind her head. And then we have the giant part starting to loop around from the other side. Bring on this one that's looped around. And then this one that's coming this way. And then this one's into this one. And then this one goes in here. And this one goes in here. And this one loops down this way. So then we get to the end of her braid, and it's just a nice leather tie. 
can go ahead and darken that if you want. And then, you know, just the end of the braid of her hair goes just out. It's just fringy. You can do whatever you want with it. It's just like the tail. Alrighty. So, starting from her neck, I'm going to go like right about here at the bottom of her neck and her hair. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and break up that collar. So she's got like a little rip in her collar, just like a V-neck. And then we have the back of her shirt here. Now I'm going to roughly go ahead and put where her furry cape should go. So from here, we're going to make a skull here, and then we're going to make a skull here. So these are her skulls attaching her cape. So from this skull, we're going to go out. And then we're going to start circling in. Same over here. I'm going to go, I'm going to actually just lightly draw through her hair. Go out. Start that one and then go in. All right, now I'm going to jump back over to this skull. Out. And then in. Jump back over here. Bring out this one. Out. And then I'm going to jump back here. Alrighty, now we got her big metal arm plates. I don't know, shoulder blades, whatever they are. So I'm gonna go underneath the fur, right where I made like this little section. This is like fur overlapping this one. I'm gonna go underneath and go up back into her fur. So round it out and then back up into her fur. Jump over here, do the exact same thing. But I'm gonna start from underneath her braid so her shoulder blade is going to start right under here. Circle out and then back in. Already. So let's start defining a little bit more. The skulls are over this ring that's keeping everything together. And then we've got another bit of fur that's going in right here and filling up this part. It's a darker fur. Then we're going to go down to her chest, round in here, and I'm gonna go right here. And you're gonna round in here for her chest. And then her arms are underneath on each side. So I'm gonna start with this arm right here. Bring down this arm. And then the other part of her arm will go alongside. So she's got tiny arms, but she's strong. Go underneath, so alongside of her chest here. Bring down her arm right here. Oh look, I hit a Mickey. <laughs> I just noticed that. So one arm goes right here. All right, let's start filling in details a little bit more what's going on. Let's start with her skull. So I'm gonna start right here with the left skull. The skulls are pretty simple. They're just ovals. Make it ovals and then they have like little itty bitty teeth. It's just one set of teeth. And they're not evil looking. They're just like, they're definitely skulls. So I give one little eye here and one little eye here. And then you just go ahead and give the division into the skull's teeth. Same thing for over here. You make it just a little bit rounder. Like there is pattern going on her shirt. So if you want to go ahead and draw, like I'm just gonna draw through everything right now since we're sketching out her shirt. The pattern just looks like it's a bunch of lines almost, like going into each other. So it's no even, it's solid brown, but there's definitely some sewing pattern going on within her shirt. All right, and it is a solid brown. Oh, we need to finish the skull. Okay, <laughs> so one skull eye is gonna go right here, and then one skull eye is gonna go right here. Forgot that we have this little skull that need to be finished. My dog was howling and I got distracted, so I had to bring her downstairs. 
<laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make the little wrap arounds, the rings. So it's just like a leather belt. We're just going to make a little wrap around and it's just like bacon two little rectangles almost. Like it's wrapping around the ring of her cape. I'm going to jump in here. One metal ring here, and then bring this up and to make this ring more together. We have the ring to her cape. Now this is this is just like a bottom part of her fur, so it's a darker fur. So I'm just gonna color this in and make it look furrier, furrier fur. So it's just a darker fur. And the same thing goes for over here. It just starts from underneath the skull, goes behind her braid. And I'm gonna color this in too, shade that in. Make it look furrier here. Then for this fur, this fur is starting from here. It's gonna go up. And it is a white fur. It's just gonna go off to the side behind her shoulder blade there. And this is falling down. Same thing for over here. I'm just going to make a little bit of fur here. Make sure I separate that from her braid. And then I'm gonna jump off to the side. The fur goes out this way. This fur will go in front, and I'm just gonna shade inside right here. And the fur should be going down. Now for her shoulder blades. <laughs> so you're going to, I'm gonna jump back into the fur, go down, and you're gonna bring out this side, kind of square it out, and you're gonna curve back into her arm alongside the bottom that you created. And actually this goes behind her arm. It's the other side of her shoulder blade and we can just go ahead and shade that in there. Now for her shoulder blade, we, they have big, huge circles here, and here, and here behind the fur. And then there's a lot more circles, like they're tinier circles, underneath here. All right, same thing. We're gonna jump off to this side, over her arm. We're gonna go out like we did over here. And then we're gonna go jump back in and back into her braid. And then this will part of her shoulder blades. I just need to go see it curves out and we see the other side, it's just it's shaded in. Same thing here, big circles on the edge, this part of her shoulder. Circle here, circle here, circle here. Little circle, little circle, little circle, little circle. You can see there's some kind of like pattern going on right there with her actual, the little circles on her shoulder blades. Now we're only just going to go from like the bust down. So for the top of her arms, she does have the wire, like, the leather wire, not wire, it's like a string. It's just like leather straps wrapped around her arms. So I'm gonna just do the top of those here and then we have a cross here. And, and then I'll jump over to this arm. So we have the cross 
of her armband here, here, and then just another one off to the side of her arm. Now you can definitely do a lot of shading around on her face, especially under her neck and behind here where her hair is because it's looping around. And if you want to give more definition to her hair, especially behind her face where her face is overlapping her hair off to the side, some shading here alongside of her braid. make a little bit of shading underneath her eyes and underneath her eyelids where her bangs are overlapping her eyes. You can shade there. Definitely shade under her eye right here. Shade around her eyelids. Making everything a little bit darker again. All those lines, her eyebrow lines. Draw that eyebrow through her bangs a little bit more. You can definitely add a little bit of rosiness, just shade in her cheeks just a little bit. And since I do not have Kleenex or a shading uh, blender stick, I'm not, I'm just gonna use my fingertip, kind of blend those in. And she does have a little bit of freckles here and there. Just a couple of freckles. It's awesome character design. Everything about How to Train Your Dragon's character design is amazing. The only other thing I would do before you're like, oh, I'm good, is to fine up her bangs just a little bit more. And just kind of break them in and give them more of a flowy kind of natural look. And always keep in mind with her headband, the headband should go outside of her hair just because it's wrapped around her head. And there you go, there's How to Draw Astrid from How to Train Your Dragon 1, 2, and 3, and then the series on Netflix, and it's all by DreamWorks. Guys, if you haven't seen How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Hidden World, it is so good. I already saw it. I saw it the night it was released. I know a lot of people have already seen it, like way before it was released in theaters. It's a good end to a beautiful series, and I hope you all will go out and see it, and I hope you enjoy drawing Astrid. It's about time I did a tutorial but you know even when I drew Hiccup a long time ago I wasn't really confident in my drawing skills and how to teach such different awesome characters because they're such a unique character design but yes guys I hope you'll go and check out the other how to train your dragon videos that I posted have a most wonderful week and I will see you all later bye